Hello guys, my name is Joseph Prusa. Well, call me Joe. I I don't know if you know me. I'm actually Rap Rap Core Developer. Rap Rap is a project from which basically MakerBot originated. But also I posted a blog post about open hardware meaning and that was basically a reaction of MakerBot going closed source with new replicator 2 and it got a lot of attention and I got answer I didn't want to hear that it actually is going to be closed source by Brie and I'm really sad by that it's really a fail of open hardware but if you want to check out the blog post I, I guess I'll put the link into the comments but yeah well this video is about the new makerware software which was actually uh, introduced along with the replicator and as you may notice and you probably watching this video because of it it doesn't support all all maker boards prior to the replicator which I found out funny and I found out about the ways how you can make makerware uh, working with all maker boards well namely cupcake and the thingomatic I personally don't have them so I haven't tested it but I think this could be a very good starting point for someone who wants to do a really profound guide and if you do that and actually post your settings I can link that in the video and into in the uh, blog post I'm going to write so here is the makerware well what is interesting about the makerware that makerware itself is only the user interface which is closed source yeah you hear right it's closed source and not like they they didn't want to share the files but they actually had to pay to be able not to share the files with you guys because they use a QT which is framework for making user interface you can see here and they are li licensed the way that if the final product is closed source they have to pay for a special license so yeah they used money from you to buy a license to be able to keep the software files from the new makerware from your reach that's quite nasty I think and I think they should fix it but anyways this is the fancy new look on the inside but even in the interface you can notice oh there's nothing on the plate let's fix that I should have some files in my wrapper folder something from my new Mandel let's take sexy where's the carriage here's the carriage okay. well let's take sexy new carriage of my new printer and go back what I was talking about which is the back end of the makerware you click make it you can choose the settings this shows basically nothing to you uh, you have three options of quality low medium and high uh, now uh, may I revise what makerboard stated about the miracle guru the new slicer done by makerboard finally uh, how is it amazing well funny part is that you can show which slice engine it uses for which quality 
For low, it uses Miracle Guru. For medium, it uses also Miracle Guru. But for high, it uses Kindforge, which basically is what you use in Replicator G and what RepRap used for a long time. Now we switch to Slicer, which is done by sound. And right now you should see on the screen link to interview I done with sound about the slicer. And maybe you can find out how to use it for your maker board. But actually seeing slicer here got me to thinking that we might be able to hack it. I've done some Skyforge hacking before and we just need to find the files where they are. I prepared that before so I know where to look for it uh, on the uh, on the Mac you can uh, you can find it in the libraries which is in the root of your system library uh, then frameworks and make about framework. Uh, well, other files you may find interesting are in actual applications. So let's find Makerware here and show package contents in the package contents and all these files. You can find that here's libqt. Qt's actually or used to be owned by Nokia, but including those libraries costed them some money. I don't know how much, but yeah. Uh, here's the binary. Here are some objects and stuff like that. So here we go. And the backend, all of it is actually in the makerbot.framework. I don't know where is it located on the Windows computer, but maybe program files or something like that. I haven't worked on Windows for a long time. But yeah, Makerware user interface talks to thing which is called Conveyor. Uh, that Conveyor have some, uh, Conveyor is actually open source so we can look at the sources and thanks to that I am able to help you out how to use your thingomatic or cupcake with with the actual uh, actual makerware here in the sources main python you can convert uh, see all the stuff including scripts which actually talk to the slicing engines. So let's take a quick look at them. They are done by Matthew V. Semsnov, I guess some employee uh, of MakerBot. They are all GNU, so that's really good. Uh, and yeah, you can see where this, how the stuff is loaded, what options you actually have, what it outputs, and stuff like that. Yeah, here are all the settings, well, basic settings. And here we go for Skyforge. Same stuff here. These two actually take the settings you set up here, like if you want raft, if you want support, if you want to set infill or layer height to something different this is managed by these two scripts I showed you just now and they talk to the normal, uh, normal slicer here is the slice, uh, Skyforge default profiles boom and boom and this is actually the place the replicator slicing default where you will put your settings for your printer you use right now 
from Replicator G. I don't have Replicator G, but you may notice that it uses Kineforge too. And you can just copy those files here. And from now on, the makerware, if you use Kineforge, will uh, export G code, which is compatible with your printer. So that is one part. If you want to test out Miracle Gru for the for your older printers, uh, in the folder Miracle Gru, you can find uh, Miracle Config Default, which is one for ABS, one for PLA, and one for PLA with no acceleration. Wow, we have printers with no acceleration middle age. Anyway, uh, Miracle, here you can see the infill and if you look at it, it's quite, actually quite simple and you can change the stuff here. But I personally do think that with some good thinking, well, with some, with some luck, the G code might actually work right away without changing the settings on your older printer. If your uh, firmware has good settings, and if you want to, well, after you change the settings, either for your Skyforge here or for Miracle Group here you won't be able to print from from the uh, from the Miracle, well, MakerWare user interface that's a shame and what you will have to do is to basically click make it uh, choose export to g-code uh, I don't know if if this with, will, will work with S3G, but yeah, doesn't matter. Leave the default setting here. You should you shouldn't change it much. The maker variable think that it generates G code for replicator, but it will have your settings for your old printer. And set everything you want and click export. Uh, uh, let's export it. Carriage. Boom. It's actually really fast. But yeah. Who cares if you can't use it for your printer, right? Uh, here's the carriage. And you can see it places the center of the build platform at. Oh, sorry. At zero zero zero, so it's compatible with with all the printers which had smaller build plate because it will be always centered. And we can look here if you modify the start G code and look, let's look at the code with the start G code from your new. Well, sorry, from your old printer, it will actually it will actually remove that entrance stuff and replace it with yours because that will that would try to extrude somewhere beyond the printer. That's basically what you need to do now. You just open your uh, replicator G and load the g-code in and hit the print and yes but some final thoughts I have about that I am really sad what happened with MakerBot and I really hope they somehow somehow make it right but I think that using Qt which they had to pay for to be closed source is clear sign that MakerBot is actually going to be closed source and 
the maker bag has a good reason for being closed source because MakerWare is actually prepared for adding another printers and adding well adding your old thingomatic and cupcake would cost them like 10 seconds of time to put them in and that is really sad because they try to force you to buy new stuff I would really love this not to be true and if you can please prove me wrong otherwise if you feel sad about that as you may hear from me I am sad uh, you are welcome to join RepRap and help us build better printers which everyone can sell and help us improve our tool chain me basically use slicer I don't know if I have the latest version here but you can add as many printers you want in here I have one prepared for my book here's my other printer another printer you can define filaments in here print settings here and you can then combine it here you don't have fancy 3d view let's try to put some stuff in maybe the same carriage but no uh, damn here but yeah at least you can view you and do everything you want. Uh, sorry where I was. Yeah, so feel free to join RepRev and work with us. Anyway, one other thing. Uh, this build platform is again optimized for replicator, but if you are going to use MakerVare for uh, Printing on your thingomatic or cupcake, you have to like set the virtual boundaries around uh, to not print outside. I'm not sure what, what boundaries are, but I think original cupcake had 10 by 10 centimeters, so this wouldn't print there. And Ah, sorry. This would like one, two, three, four, one spare, one, two, three, two spare, two spare, like virtual build platform here. Well, that's about it. I I would love to post the, the setting and other things, but yeah, let's hope that MakerBot fixes that. Otherwise. This might be the biggest fail of open hardware yet. Anyway, thanks. I'm Joe Prusa and follow me on Twitter at Josef Prusa for more information about the MakerBot and how they are getting closed source. And also subscribe to my channel here on YouTube for more awesome videos. Thanks. See ya.